Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of a thing we called, I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but it's called Nowdive TV Mythbusters. Um, I'd like to talk to you about three myths that are going out there in the, uh, in the industry um, around our trusty SPG. We are in the middle of a teaching a live essentials class, UTD essentials class uh, in Danish, but I'll make this video in English for you. Let's talk about three myths are going out around and we'll see if, uh, if they're true or not. The first myth is that there is a teaching way of saying when you turn on your tank, you turn the SPG away from you because if the glass explodes, if the SPG is broken, you'll get the glass in your face. We'll come to that in a minute. The second one is the 50 bar rule. 50 bar, that's the backup. So as long as you stay above the red zone in the SPG, you're in the safe zone, 50 bar. You need to get back on the boat with 50 bar in your tank. Let's look at that one. And then for your technical divers out there with a the flare for the technical bits and bobs, uh, when you're diving with two tanks, obviously you need two SPGs. One as a primary, one as a backup. Or if you have a transmitter, one of those computers, fancy things, then you need a SPG is a backup for the transmitter. Let's see if the SPG isn't already a backup device all by itself. So let's dive into those three things. Right, let's start with the first one. Turn the SPG away from you when you turn on your tank. Let's look a little bit closer at uh, some SPGs I've got here. So just come a little bit closer to the television or the computer screen or your iPhone or whatever you're looking at. A little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Not so close. That's it. That's about it. All right. Um, we got a different bunch of different designs here. Now let's look at this one. A very common, regular, big brass, nice heavy duty SPG. The glass, tempered glass it says. Um, when you look at this one, on the back there's a tiny little hole here with a, a little rubber plug in it. That rubber plug, that is the overpressure. So that rubber plug is meant to pop out when there is overpressure in this house. So what happens if you turn the glass away from you, you get the rubber thingy in your face. So with this design, turning the glass away from you, it's not a good idea. Here we got another brand that took this apart is for teaching purposes. As you can see, there's a different design in them in the way they give the measurement. It's another different design. But here, that little rubber thingy is in the top. So if here I'm turning my pressure gauge away from me, I'm not going to get in my eyes, I'm going to get in their eyes. So with this, also not a very good idea to turn the SPG away from you. Then we got one of these designs. No hole. No rubber thingy. In this design, the whole glass is mounted inside the housing with a with an O-ring. So the glass itself acts as an overpressure release valve. So is that dangerous now? Will that pop in your face when you turn on the tank? Let's go outside and see how much battering we can put through this little SPG. All right, let's prove. Um, here we have an SPG. It's actually broken. On a little side note, you can uh, you can see. The SPG is broken because there was a little delay in the arrow cut or the, the, the needle coming up. If we close it here, so a good check to do. Close the valve, purge your regulator and see if the needle tracks smoothly as it does here. But now it's, it stops. It goes down very, very slow but there's no more pressure in the hoses as you can hear. The hoses are empty. It'll fall down but this means that there is debris or you know calcium build up in this SPG. That's why it's broken and we took it off and replaced it. But now I'll show you there as you can see there's still air going through because it's measuring fine. Um, but I'll show you there's no danger in a high pressure hose. There's no danger.
There's absolutely no danger here. I don't think this is an, um, a reasonable scenario that you ever expose your SPG to this, but there's no danger here. So even if you completely... It's a low flow system. You can still die, but actually to die. There's no danger in SPGs. The danger is in those low pressure hoses. They break, then you need to react fast. But these have a small, tiny hole. I'll show you. Look, here you can see there's a tiny little prick here, tiny little hole here. And this is a, a, a broken SPG hose, which you cut up for teaching purposes. But as you can see, there's a tiny little hole there. And that's why the flow is so low. So yes, the SPG will pop off as you can see on the video, but it's not gonna, you know, pop off spectacularly and hit you in the face. Whew, that took a bit of work. Well, you can see, it took quite a bit of hammering, that, uh, that old SPG, and it didn't blow up in my face. And that is because of that flow I talked about. Here we can see an industrial SPG that's mounted on a compressor or whatever they are. And it has, it has a little overpressure release valve. And actually this one popped off on our compressor. It was mounted like this on the panel, and this one just popped up in the air. And then I can hear a slight little hiss because also this flow inside these are very, very slow. SPGs are, like I said, not made to produce a lot of flow, it's just made to measure the pressure in the tank. So I guess we can call that little myth busted. You, there's no need to turn the SPG away from you when you turn on your tank. It's a matter of fact, a very good idea to look at the gauge when you turn on your tank to see if the needle tracks nicely, to see if it goes smoothly up then when you take the pressure off your first stage by purging one of the regulators, you should see the needle slowly going down to zero and not have stops. Because that's a sign that the SPG is broken. And they do break because um, I don't put all functional SPGs in the classroom just for me to destroy it. They're all broken at one point. So that's why we use them for teaching purposes. So that's the first myth busted. Let's have a look at the second myth. Almost all SPGs on the market have some kind of marker. It says, this is the one we demolished, a 50 bar marker, a 50 bar marker. But 50 bars, what does that mean? 50 bar. 50 bar in this little tank. Or 50 bar in my double 12, which is more gas. This one or the double 12? The double 12, right? It's the same. Pressure, but it's a bigger volume. So how can the manufacturer print 50 bar as a safety zone for all tanks? 50 bar. How does they know what kind of tank you're in a mountain? Are you going to die with a 10 liter, a double 12, two 80s, two 11 liters, and so on and so on. It's going to be different for every tank size. On top of that, it's going to be different for every depth you're going to dive on. Let's look at this little calculation. Um, we do a calculation in our ascent. Um, where we measure or we calculate the time it takes two divers to come out of the water while sharing air. Then we do the math in the air consumption of those divers and we end up with a figure called rock bottom. Rock bottom is an amount of liters, exactly the amount of liters we need for two divers to come up from the bottom to the next available air source. Either that's a surface or a gauge bottle or a deagle bottle or whatever. Um, to make things a little bit more easy for the most of you out there, we just made an ascent. As 90% of you have learned, from your depth you go to 5 meters, at 5 meters you stay 3 minutes for safety stop and you take 1 minute to go to the surface. That ascent will take 8 minutes, no matter how you look at it. Our ascent also takes 8 minutes, but we do it a little bit different, but that's another story. So let's say we give ourselves one minute to solve an air sharing scenario. Hey, I'm out of gas, give me your air, boom, and we're ready to go. It takes about one minute, or at least you have one minute to it. Then it takes you three minutes from 30 meters to get to five meters. At five meters, you stay for another three minutes for your safety stop. I mean, 
we pushed our luck by running out of gas or having a problem with our air supply. So we don't want to push the limit anyway by shooting past our safety stop. So we're going to stay there for three minutes. And then it takes one minute to go to the surface, right? So it takes eight minutes. So we know for eight minute long time, two divers are going to breathe from one air source. No. Air consumption, we calculate with 15 liters per minute surface air consumption in resting rate. So very, very stationary, looking at a line during your decompression or your safety stop, we use about 15 liters per minute at the surface and then related to depth. 20 liters normal swimming rate, 30 liters per minute when we're stressed. So if we are in an air sharing situation, we can call ourselves a little bit stressed. We'll use probably a little bit more than we'll normally go when we're swimming along the reef. So eight minutes long time, two divers are gonna breathe 30 liters a minute at an average depth of 2.5 bar. Average depth of 15 meters. I think that's reasonable considering we're coming from 30 meters, yeah? All right, that means eight times two times 30 times 2.5 gives 1200 liters. Now this is a number we can use because 1200 liters, that's a constant. And now I can just divide that by the volume of the tank I have on my back. So if I have 1200 liters here in a 10 liter, that means 120 bar. So for this ascent, two divers air sharing to the surface from 30 meters, I'll need 120 bar. In a 12 liter, I'll need 100 bar. In a 15 liter tank, I'll need 50 bar, uh, 80 bar. In a double 12 or 24 liter tank, I need 50 bar. So here you can see, it makes no sense. It makes sense on a double 12 at a 30 meter dive. But I don't think the manufacturer made those SPGs, so everyone dives double 12, 30 meters. So this calculation, I think it's important to note that it differs for every depth, cylinder size and every depth. So I guess when you hear people say, yeah, you need, I was taught you need to have 50 bar when you reach the boat, get back to the surface. How do you then calculate when you need to leave the bottom? Now I encourage you to make this calculation, but without the emergency. So it's seven minutes, no air sharing scenario, times one diver, times a normal surface consumption, 2.0, so 20 liters per minute, times 2.5, because the average depth will still be the same. And see how much gas you will use normally when you ascend. And then say, okay, when I ascend, let's say in a 12 liter tank with 100 bar, using only the normal ascent, and see how much gas you end up at the surface. It's a good exercise. But I guess we can call that myth that 50 bar is your safety zone, you stay above 50 bar, you're always safe, I guess we can call that busted. Because if I do that and start my ascent with a 12 liter or even a 10 liter from 30 meters, I'm gonna run out of air, both of us. Let's come to the third myth. The third myth is that we have two SPGs when we double, double tank or when you have a transmitter, it's a good idea to have a normal analog SPG as well as a backup. My point of view is that the single, pressure gauge you have can already be a backup device. If you take the time and effort to learn your air consumption and relate it to your air consumption per minute in bars, then you can actually determine or predict what your SPG is going to say even before you look at it. So follow me here, I make this little, uh, this little um, graph here, pressure, depth, the tank size and the liters per minute. So at 10 meters, we have two bar. When we have a surface air consumption rate of 20 liters, we'll use 40 liters per minute at 10 meters. Yeah, so long, so good. That means 40 liters per minute in a 10 liter tank at 10 meters, I'll use four bar per minute. Now here, this makes much more sense because these SPGs don't show liters, I cannot, adjust this, okay, now I'm diving with a 10 liter, and now I'm diving with this liter, and the, the, the dial changes. I can just say, hey, four bar per minute means after 10 minutes of diving to 10 meters, I'll have used 40 bar. I look at my bottom gauge, and I see, hey, 10 minutes depth, I know my average depth, okay, 10 minutes, I should have used about 40 bar. Let's look at my SPG. I started with 200, it should say around 160. Let's look. Hey, 120, what? 
Hey buddy, do I have some bubbles behind my back that I don't know about? Or, hmm, wow, that current took more gas than I realized. Now we have a link between what you think is right and what you can see is actual. Or is the SPG faulty after 20 minutes I've used, I should have used 80 bar. I'm gonna look at my SPG and it shows me 180. What? Okay, I know I'm good enough in training out and working out, but that's ridiculous. And you give it a hit, not poke, and it falls down. 200 bar, ah, okay, that makes more sense. Then you know something's wrong. So instead of using your SPG as a primary means of showing how much gas you have, I think it's good practice to train yourself in making a graph like this to, to see what you can expect your gas usage will be. So for example, in a 15 liter tank at 20 meters, where we use 60 liters per minute, we'll probably use also four bar per minute because it's a bigger tank. At the same tank, but now at 30 meters, I'll use five bar per minute. See where we're going at? So you're getting a more intuitive feel of your gas usage before you have the SPG. So I guess we can also call that one busted. Thanks for watching. Show us uh, your appreciation by giving a thumbs up to this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. There are loads of videos. Most of them are in Danish, but uh, since a lot of you requested them to be in English, a lot of them will also come in English. Um, if you have any questions, give us an email or a shout out. Or if you, um, you want to share your comments down below, you are so, help, so welcome to do so as well. Have a nice day and uh, let's see you out there.